programming is brought to you by Local Video Marketing. In association with CoachChick.com Hi, I'm Coach Chick's mascot, Professor B, and, my usual job is to recommend some of the awesome and free hockey advice on this site. But today, I want to alert you to a special deal, that gives you total access to everything within CoachChick.com, 
for just one dollar. That's right, complete membership for 31 days, for just one dollar. The only drawback, this deal ends at midnight, on New Year's Eve 1231 2022. So, please, don't delay. It's really a no-brainer. Hi there, and welcome back to another episode of Hockey Nutrition with Kim. I'm Kim Lucard, Hockey Mom RD, and this month I'm sharing with you day two of my mini course, Create Your Skaters Meal Plan Template. This is self-paced. You can go at your own speed. Each month I am going to be giving you another step to do in the creation of creating your skaters meal plan template. Last month in November, I recorded day one, so you could go back in Coach Chick's videos and watch day one, and today is day two. So on today's agenda, we're going to be going over your growing skater, the importance of not forgetting to hydrate, what are pre-skate meals, the importance of protein, fiber, and fat, and you'll be creating your skater's lunch and a mid-afternoon snack. On these presentations, I aim to help you have the guidelines to create two meals or a meal and a snack to help your skater be the best that they can be on the ice. Your skater is no doubt probably in their growing years, typically between the ages of 11 to 14 for young men, a little bit earlier for young women. And in your skater's growing years, they are developing, they are growing, and they are also a youth athlete. They are probably a high-level athlete, and they need more calories than a child at the same age who is not as active. However, before you even think about the amount of calories they need, help them get quality sleep. Sleep and nutrition are very, very important for your skater's overall health and their performance on the ice. The majority of youth ice hockey players are going to need between eight and a half to 10 hours of sleep a night. Now, younger skaters can go all the way up to 12 hours, say between the ages of six and 12. They're going to need between nine and 12 hours. Whereas a skater that's in their teen years, 13 to 18, is going to need between eight and a half and 10. And aim for three meals and three snacks. Now, on a non active day, you could back off on the number of snacks that they have, but definitely on hockey days, you're looking at three meals and three snacks to ensure that your skater is getting enough calories to fuel their activity on the ice. But don't forget about hydration. I encourage all my skaters to start with water first thing when they wake up. Just four ounces, that's basically a big gulp of water, will help them realize that it's important to start the day with water and keep hydrating throughout the day. The skater who pays attention to their hydration throughout the day will have more stamina than the skater who doesn't make hydration a priority. So when we're talking about a pre-skate meal, this pre-skate meal is typically in the four to six hours windows before ice time. This is going to be a little bit larger of a meal. The body has time to digest it before they get on the ice, but there are some guidelines. You definitely want to make sure that this meal is not too heavy in protein, too heavy in fiber, or too heavy in fat. All of those nutrients will slow your skater down the closer they get to ice time. Now you might be thinking, well, what about protein? Protein is definitely important, but you wanna make sure it's not way too much protein. So when you are creating your skater's meal plan template, and in this case, in this day, we're focusing on their lunch and their mid-afternoon snack. To create their lunch, you're gonna think of a carbohydrate-rich food first. So it could be rice, it could be, pasta, then a lean protein, and lastly, a healthy fat. 
So say if your skater likes Chipotle, I know a lot of skaters love Chipotle. You could do like a white or brown rice with some of the lean steak, only a regular portion. They don't need double portions. And then you can add some vegetables to it, but go easy on the queso and the cheese. Then for a snack in the mid afternoon snack, you're going to want to choose a protein also and some carbohydrates. So by choosing proteins and carbohydrates at all their meals and snacks, you're going to ensure that they're getting the amount of protein that they need and they're getting enough carbohydrates. Carbohydrates obviously being number one, protein being number two, because I find the vast majority of skaters that I work with, they skimp on their carbohydrate rich foods and they load up too heavy on their protein rich foods. So there needs to be a balance. Hockey is fueled, it's a stop and go sport and it is fueled by carbohydrates for your skaters glycogen stores. So if you are interested in learning more about youth ice hockey nutrition, you can email me at hockeymomrd at gmail.com. Come on back in January and I will be presenting day three where you will be working on your skaters pre and post skate snacks right before ice time. I wish your skater much success on the ice. Happy skating. This is Kim Lucar, Hockey Mom RD. Morning guys, Dave Schmitz, resistancebandtraining.com. Welcome to the band gym. More importantly, welcome to my 12 days of Christmas. This is gonna be a great time, guys. I'm so excited to go ahead and get this started. For the next 12 days, you're gonna get a workout every other day, and you're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna challenge you to do that workout not one, at least once during those two days. So that means you're gonna have to work out every other day. Guys, if you do it right, you might even shed a few pounds before Christmas, which would be great as well, right? All right, let's go ahead and get started. Today, day one and day two, here's your workout coming at you right now. All right, let's go ahead. Let's get your first workout done for days one and two. All right, here's it very simple. You're going to go four exercises. You're going to cycle through all four of these exercises. Now, my suggestion is it's 45 seconds on and 15 off, but you can choose and set your own interval. 30 on, 15 off, 20 on, 10 off, 50 on, 10 off. You choose what you want to do. But here's your four exercises you're going to cycle through. All right, Every workout we do is going to have an upper body, lower body, and it's going to go ahead and have a cardiovascular exercise, and this is no different. Here it's coming at you. First exercise out of the gate is going to be overhead push presses. I know you've seen me do them a lot, but let me take you through how to get into the band very easily. First of all, you want to stand on the band. Make sure that you get your feet set on the band. Now, to get into the band and get it up on your hands, take the left hand, put it right on the palm of your hand, and bring it on up. By setting it on the palm of your hand, it's much more comfortable. All right. Now, bring your other hand in, do the same thing, and there you are. Thumbs should be through the band, All right. so you're ready to go. Push presses, drop down. Drive straight up overhead, back down. If your resistance doesn't feel right, you can always adjust a little bit to make sure it's equal on both sides. Overhead, drop it down, bring it back to your collarbone close, set your hips and explode up over top. Push apart a little bit at the top just to set your shoulder blades. When you're done, drop it down, take a rest. Front squats, exercise two, up on your shoulder. Notice how I bring it up. I bring it, drop my shoulder down, I take my hand and place it onto my shoulder. Now it's sitting there. It's a flat band, it's gonna set there really well. I drop my other shoulder through and I'm right there, all right? Front squats are set. Band is up on my shoulders, elbows up high, and we're dropping into a front squat. All right, right there. Drop it on down, make sure you get good depth. Push out against the band a little bit so your knees stay nice and locked out, so you're not letting them collapse in. Front squats. If you get out, just drop out of it, all right? Two ways you can do push or pull parts, which is exercise three, step through the band, flip it up, and you can go pull parts right there. If you don't want to do that because the band is too heavy, you can also go ahead, 
Just take a single band, wrap it around your hand, wrap it around your hand, and you can go pull parts here as well. The key is elbow straight, trunk tight, split your stance so your low back stays solid, and let's go and really get after that mid-back area and post your shoulder area. That's exercise three. Your heart rate racer, take your dynamic stabilizer. If you don't have one, no big deal. Don't worry about it, all right? Go ahead, if you do, pop it on. Go above the knees. You know what we talk about? Always going above the knees. We're going burpees. Now, I'm gonna do burpees off the medicine ball. You can do them off the floor. You can do them off anything you want. You know how to do burpees. You choose. I'm just going to take the medicine ball to add a little bit of variety to it and, and not allow me to go as far down or as far low, as low as normal so I don't have to go all the way down. All right? Reason being is that I can go faster. And this is a heart rate racer, so I want to go quicker. So ball's here, set, bang, burpee. We're moving. Pop those feet all the way back, trunk tight, all the way back. Notice my feet stay apart. I don't let my feet come together. I also make sure my feet are wide when I come up so that it clears my hips, allows me to easily stand up, all right? Burpees, that's your fourth and final exercise. Get after it, guys. You got two days to knock that workout out. Let's go. Get it done. I'll be back with you shortly with your next workout. See you soon. My name is Shawnee Harley. I'm a two-time Olympian and mental toughness coach. And a while ago, I posted a video about the difference between coachable and compliant. And I had a number of people say, love the video. But you know what? You got to help us apply it. The theory is great. How do we put it into action? So this is the follow-up to that video. And this is how it started. I work with athletes and I ask them, hey, are you coachable? And they're like, oh yeah, I'm coachable. I'm like, awesome, keep being coachable. Then I go and watch them practice or train or compete. Guess what I see? Compliant. Guess what I hear? One voice and it's the coaches. So I'm asking you, are you clear on your definition of coachable or are you confusing it with compliant? Coaches tell me, Shawnee, we create independent thinkers here. We want problem solvers. We want leaders. We want athletes that are creative. I'm like, boom. But guess what? You can't have any of that in an autocratic dictatorship. You can't have any of that in an atmosphere that's about compliance. So let's apply coachable. What if you thought about this? Let's give them a voice. Let's give them an opinion. You don't have to agree with it, but let them in. They're part of your team. Let them have an opinion. Ask them things like this. Hey, on a scale of one to 10, how would you rate that drill? What's one thing that would make that drill better? Have you ever asked them, what are the favorite things that we do in practice that we should do more of? What are the things you really hate that you think we should do less of? You don't have to do less of them. You don't have to do more of them. But it'd be nice if you took some of their feedback. How about the locker room? What about timeouts? Who's talking? Who's directing? Who's lecturing? Could you shift from being the sage on the stage to the guide on the side? What if you ask them important questions that cause self-reflection, that cause them to think, that cause them to debate, and you put them into small groups and let them converse and let them come up with answers and let them disagree with each other and agree with each other and then bring it into the bigger group and then you guide that conversation. Athletes tell me all the time, I'm really coachable 
And then I say, when was the last time you ever disagreed with your coach? And they're like, never. When was the last time you asked a coach a tough question? Never. When was the last time your coach asked for feedback? Never. I know. This isn't easy. Sport teaches us that we're supposed to know everything. But you know what? Your athletes are smarter than you think. They know more than you think. They hear more than you think. And they feel more than you think. So here's one more question that you could ask. What's one thing that I could do to help you show up as your greatest self? What should I do more of? What should I do less of? What should I stop doing? And what should I start doing? It's time to create an atmosphere full of coachable, independent thinkers that have opinions and a voice. That's how we grow our athletes. That's how we grow ourselves. How often have you felt like you've been wasting your time trying to connect with new customers? Aren't you also tired of not being sure which way to turn for more attention? Now, here's some great news for sure. Video is the best way to get your message out there. Better yet, there are even more effective ways nowadays to attract attention and hold it longer than you ever have before. No more having site visitors leave your website after only a few seconds. With a virtual assistant like me, you can say goodbye to such concerns, mainly because your visitors will love the help we can provide. Just let Dennis and Brenda tell you all about interactive video or conversational marketing. And let them tell you more about my colleagues and me. Start getting more leads and sales right now by using the nearby link. If member coaches may be noticing, I'm following individual hockey skills in the same order I've listed them in my building blocks approach. Of course, progressions are important to our teaching, and so is having some systematic view of our game's skills. And that's why I began with an overview of specificity. I next looked at the most basic skill, skating, and then I added puck handling to that. So, with those skills understood, I hope it makes sense to study the best way to approach the teaching of passing and receiving. If youth coaches make one mistake in this area of our game, it's to think of passing solely as a tactical thing and not requiring great skills. As a matter of fact, just as we should have discovered in studying puck handling, making and catching passes requires an asymmetric approach. In other words, both ends of a pass very often have to be accomplished while also performing other physical skills. Let's go back to the basics first though. For making a good pass usually includes a dribble of the puck a glance at the target, and then a sweeping motion to the target. So when I teach this to young players, I constantly repeat, dribble, look, slide. Dribble, look, and slide. One of the reasons I want to teach sound puck handling basics first is so my students learn early to handle the puck with their eyes up. Don't tell me a player can be an effective passer without being able to do that in traffic and while also looking around for enemy players and open teammates. On the other side of the pass, 
I'll suggest two extremely important things. Number one, a receiver needs soft hands to give with the incoming puck. Otherwise, the puck is going to bounce off the stick. Number two, the stick blade must be held perpendicular to the path of the pass because to do anything else is to allow the puck to deflect rather than stick on the blade. One idea I brought back from my long ago studies in the old Soviet Union was the use of something I call the Russian half stick. I'd have my kids hunt for or save their own sticks with blades broken at the tip. They'd smooth things for safety and then use them in passing drills. The real beauty of those half sticks is that they force players to make and catch passes on the middle to heel of their blades and not out on the tip. As for the drilling, I'd go from stationary pairs passing to slow moving in pairs. I'd then go to crossing pairs and eventually to three-man weaves. From there on, I'd keep hopping on the basic principles while working on things like breakouts and attack plays. And don't forget the asymmetric work either, while using some of the same drills from puck handling to challenge the players in passing and receiving. Then one last thing, because I'm sure a few members still don't believe how much all the skills are dependent on one another. I've already mentioned how much puck handling means to passing and receiving. However, get a load of these two connections with skating. A long time ago, an old friend was actually the head coach of the Boston Bruins, and we once talked about the fact that a number of his players couldn't execute crossovers and keep their sticks down and steady on the ice. And honest to God. We're talking asymmetric movements here or in this case, being able to use the upper and lower bodies separately. So, picture the problem those pro players had catching passes on the go, as their sticks bounced up and down with each crossover. And here's something else. A number of years ago, I discovered on video that a lot of my players had difficulty reaching outside their centers of gravity in order to sweep a pass and they also couldn't reach far out to give with an incoming pass. What I realized was that this was a skating balance problem. Again, with certain players not daring to reach very far outside their centers of gravity. My point? The better our player's balance is, maybe from things like rope skipping on the ice, the more confident they'll be on their rounded blades. Oh, and sometime down the road, we'll talk about one-touch passing. But I'll suggest that's easy if the basic skills are in order. So, any questions or things to add here before I turn my attentions towards specificity and scoring goals? This has been a local video marketing production. We hope you've enjoyed this, and that you've picked up a number of great hockey tips. Please do tell some friends about these shows, and let the contributing coaches know how much you appreciate them.